Okay, welcome back. Uh, part seven of our mock exam review. Uh, to find this practice exam, the study guide, or both, follow these links. Okay, also visit our website. Uh, we have more practice questions, um, more videos, uh, everything else, all our materials are available there as well. And then follow us on Instagram um, for some daily posts. Um, if you like this video, like, subscribe. It really helps. Uh, we've got two more coming this week. So we're doing three videos a week um, right now. So look out for those. Um, other than that, let's get into it. Okay, 61. A crisis emergency situation is, so a lot of ethics questions today. Okay, so when we talk about a crisis emergency situation, okay, this could be hair pulling, this could be head banging, this could be hitting, this could be playing with sharp objects, uh, playing with fire. Um, any of these could be considered crisis or emergency situations if what? Okay. A, not a big deal. Obviously not the right answer. Okay. B, a situation where you, the client, or someone else is in danger. This one looks good. Okay. So a crisis emergency situation is a situation where you, the client, or someone else is in danger. Okay. And that's considered a crisis or an emergency. Now you should have some sort of training at your company or wherever you work with how to deal with these situations. Okay. But this is what is considered a crisis emergency situation. Okay. See something you should not report. No, of course not. Remember last video, we talked about reporting. Okay. To our supervisors about everything. Same, same is true here. And then D only happens with older clients. No, some people think that younger clients, you know, you never have to deal with these kind of things, but remember there's a lot of safety situations involved. Okay. So these could pop up, you know, in a variety of ways, but remember anywhere, any situation where you, the client or someone else is in danger, is a crisis or an emergency. 62, which of the following increases or decreases the value of a reinforcer? Okay, simply a definition question. If you've been learning your terms, all right, which you should be doing, this should be a very easy, straightforward question. Okay, these questions, I keep saying it gets so much easier on the exam when you know your terms and your definitions. So which of the following increases or decreases the value of a reinforcer? Okay, what makes you want or not want something, okay? A, motivating operation. Yep, that's it, okay? B, abolishing operation, okay? What is an abolishing operation? What well, reduces the value of a reinforcer, but is also a type of motivating operation, okay? So A is the much better answer because 62 is asking for both, increases or decreases, okay? C, discriminative stimuli. What does the SD do, right? The SD signals it's available while the motivating operation, okay, increases or decreases the value, right? So the MO comes before the SD, okay? And then DSD, right? That's the same as C, okay? You should know that and you know that's not the answer. So it has to be A, okay? Motivating operation. Learn those terms, learn those definitions, right? These get so much, so much easier. 63, you were teaching a child to write their name. You start by having them trace bold, large letters. You then remove the bold and have them trace the letters. You then make the letters normal size and have them trace. You then remove the beginning two letters of their name and have them trace. You then remove all letters and have them write their name independently. What are you doing? Okay, so where did we start, right? We're teaching a child to write their name and we're having them trace bold, large letters, okay? So think about it, there's a lot of prompting going on, right? Slowly, what are we doing? Removing the prompts, okay? Until at the end, they write their name independently, okay? So before we even read the, the quest answer choices, okay? We should know, what are we doing? We're removing or fading the prompts. And look at A, right? Prompt fading. What are the rest of them? Task chaining. No, this is not a chain, right? We're not teaching, um, a set of, of steps, okay? We're teaching one thing, writing their name, right? We're just doing it with a lot of prompts, okay? So B is out. C, discrete trial teaching. We're not sure what kind of teaching is going on here, okay? So we can't pick C. Um, D, verbal prompting. It's not verbal, right? It's all acting, okay, on the stimuli, okay? So therefore it's not verbal prompting. So it's A, prompt fading, okay? So when people talk about stimulus transfer control, right, okay? This is a good example of transferring control of a, a stimulus transfer control, right? You're transferring control from the B 
big prompts, okay, right, to no prompts and just a piece of paper, right? So we're, we want to transfer the control from the prompts, right, to the SD, okay? And the SD should just be the piece of paper, right? You saying write the name or there might be, okay, a name box. And that should be, okay, what prompts them to independently write their name, right? Not the bold letters, not the tracing, okay? We want to fade that. We want to change control, okay, to a naturally occurring, okay, SD, right? Which is handing a piece of paper, okay, a name box, etc. So A, prompt fading. What type of reinforcement system is based on time? Again, know your definitions, okay? There's only certain ones based on time. So you immediately know which ones aren't the right answer. So A, ratio. Okay, what is ratio based on? Responses, can't be that. DRI, right? What does DRI stand for? Differential reinforcement of incompatible behaviors, okay? Now, maybe your system is on time with DRI, right? But just from seeing DRI, we don't know what the system is based on, okay? So DRI is out. Interval, right? If we have a uh, fixed interval one, what is that, right? It's a reinforcement system based on one minute increments, right? So interval is based on time. And then DRA, same thing with B, okay? It's a, it's a, reinfor it's a differential reinforcement system, right? But we don't know what, if it's, if it's based on time or, or intervals until we get deeper into it, okay? So the best answer here is interval. 65, which of the following is not a type of continuous measurement, okay? So think about what are our continuous measurements, right? We have frequency, rate, latency, IRT, okay, and duration. So those are our continuous measurements we're talking about. So all we need to do is go in, look at our answer choices, and find the one that doesn't match those five, right? Latency, yes, continuous. Duration, yes, continuous. Frequency, yes, continuous. Partial time sampling, no. What is partial time sampling? Discontinuous, okay? So again, Really straightforward question, right? If you know your continuous measurements and you know your discontinuous measurements, right? That should be an, a layup, right? A super simple question. Okay. 66. Ethically and professionally, you should comply with what? Pick the best answer. Okay. So you're an RBT and you <coughs> are required to adhere to ethical and professional guidelines. Okay. Well, which ones? A. You only need to comply with the law. Okay, that's a very definitive, strong answer. You only need to comply with the law. Well, we know in any workplace, you have to follow the law, right? But you also have policies in place that you need to follow as well. So A, okay, is just too strong. B, all legal, regulatory, and workplace requirements. Yes, right? So in this situation, you're following the law. Okay, you're following the regulations of the board of the BACB, and you're following workplace requirements, workplace policies, okay? So B looks good. Let's try C, company policy. Yes, but what else, right? It's the same as A, okay? Yeah, you need to follow the law, but there are other things. Yes, you must follow company policy, but there are other things. And D, the ethical code, yes, you need to follow all three, okay? So you might be saying, well, that's a very straightforward question, and it is, right? Ethics questions, are straightforward, right? They're not trying to trick you, okay? It's typically common sense, right? What is the best answer? And the best answer is here, follow all the laws and policies in place, okay? 67, what question should you ask yourself when presented with an ethical dilemma? Okay, so this is um, a question typically uh, asked on a bunch of BCBA exams, okay? So it's a very pointed question because these are three specific things highlighted at, actually um, as BCBAs and, and, and practitioners of ABA, okay? So it's just a good thing to know, right, as you go into this field, okay, what you're expected, okay, what, what ethics are expected of you, okay? So the three things you should ask yourself are what's the right thing to do, what's worth doing, and what does it mean to be a good RBT, okay? You should ask yourself all of these things whenever you're presented with a difficult situation, okay? What's the right thing to do in that situation, okay? Putting all personal opinions aside, what is the right thing to do, right? What's worth doing, right? What's gonna make an impact, okay? What is, what is going to make a difference, okay? What's worth doing 
in that situation, okay? And then what does it mean to be a good RBT? Ultimately, that's what you should be asking yourself all the time, right? How can I be a good RBT? How can I provide good services, okay? Because if you're not being a good RBT, right, then the only person really suffering is our client, and that's who we should be focused on the most, okay? So this is just a very ABA question, right? The three questions you should ask yourself, what's the right thing to do, what's worth doing, and what does it mean to be a good RBT? 68, you are bitten by a mosquito. The bite starts to itch, so you scratch it. Scratching the itch is what? This is one of my favorite questions, okay? I think it really defines and encapsulates so much about ABA, okay? And it's such a difficult question for people just starting, okay? Um, so if you can understand this question, you're really on your way. And okay, I say it every time we talk about this question, okay, you're on your way to understanding, okay, the, just the basics of ABA, right? So let's think about it. You're bitten by a mosquito, the bite starts to itch, you scratch it, okay? Now think about what happens when you scratch the itch, right? The itch goes away, okay? So let's think about our ABC, right? What is the antecedent? Okay, you're bitten by a mosquito, the behavior starts to itch, the consequence is you scratch it, okay? As a result of the consequence, what happens? The itch goes away, okay? So what is the itch, okay? Because in the future, you're more likely to scratch that itch again, right? So what is scratching, okay? Is it negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, negative punishment, positive punishment? Well, we know it's not C and D, right? Because we're, going, we're more likely to itch again in the future, okay? So it can't be punishment, right? What is punishment? Less likely, it decreases the behavior. This is actually increasing and more likely to happen. So it has to be some type of reinforcement. Everybody wants to say positive reinforcement, okay? Because they think you're applying the scratch. What are you really doing though, right? You're removing something, you're removing the itch, okay? And when we remove something and reinforce, what is that called? Negative reinforcement. It's a great question, okay? If you understand that, right? You're really on your way, it has everything, right? Increasing, decreasing, adding, removing, okay? It's a really good question, it's negative reinforcement. Which of the following is an example of a prompt? Okay, remember what is a prompt? We're trying to evoke um, the response we want to see, okay? Turning on your computer, no, that's just a response. Writing a note to remind your partner to take out the trash, that looks pretty good, right? You're gonna have the note and your partner sees the note, it prompts them, take out the trash. C, complying with an instruction, no, just a response. D, opening a window when you're hot, no, just a response, okay? The only one where there's a prompt is an additional stimuli added to get the response we want is B. A, C, and D are all just responses. 70, final one, every day you put your key in the ignition, turn it and your car starts. Today your car doesn't start, okay? You begin to, begin to aggressively turn the key, push the gas pedal and pound the steering wheel. What might be happening, okay? So every day you get in your car, you turn it on, it starts. What's happening? You're getting reinforcement, more likely to turn your car on and start it in the future, right? Today, what happens? You start it, you don't get reinforcement. So what is happening, okay? A previously reinforced behavior is no longer receiving reinforcement. What is that? Know your definitions, extinction, okay? What happens in extinction? Aggression in the behavior increases. So what are we doing? We're aggressively turning the key, pushing the gas pedal, and we pound the steering wheel. What might be happening? A, an extinction burst might be happening, right? What happens during extinction is these behaviors temporarily increase, okay? And aggression is possible. So A looks good. B, punishment. Are we being punished, right? Is there any punishment? Is there any decrease in the behavior? No, right? So it's not punishment, okay? Avoidance, are we avoiding anything? No, we're doing, we're doing the opposite, right? We really wanna turn our car on, right? So we're not avoiding anything. Tacting, are we labeling anything? No, okay. So A, an extinction burst, right? Another good question, you should be going through your day trying to apply ABA terms to your day-to-day -day life, okay? That's a really good way to practice this, these things because on the exam, they're gonna ask you a lot of applied questions, okay? So go through your day trying to apply what, you, what you're learning to everyday situations and see how it fits. All right, that wraps it up. 
Two more videos coming this week. Remember, check out our website, okay? Um, check out the comments below for the study materials, and they're also available on the website. Uh, follow us on Instagram, like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. Um, thanks for the support, and study hard.